Okay, so the Theogony is a Greek poem written by Hesiod somewhere between 700 and 730 BC. And it describes the beginnings and the genealogy of the Greek gods. And it starts, in the beginning there was chaos and then came earth and from chaos came darkness and night and night and darkness produced brightness and day then earth created the heavens to be equal to herself and to cover her and to be a resting place then she created the mountains and the sea then earth lay with heaven and bore the twelve titans Oceanus, Koyos, Kreas, Lapitos, Hyperion, Thea, Rhea, Timas, Nemesine, lovely Tethys and Phoebe, the golden crowned. Last after these, the most terrible of sons, the crooked, scheming Kronos, came to birth. So these then were the first generation of gods. And it's worth noting that in Greek mythology, the Titans were a giant race of deities. Then it said that Earth bore the Cyclops, the three Cyclops, and these, it is said, were insolent sons, and energy, strength, and craft was their works. Then she bore the three hundred handers who were also apparently insolent children and it said that they were darting back and forth and each of them had a hundred arms and fifty heads then it said that heaven or we can call him Uranus as it's used interchangeably throughout the poem. So, heaven was Uranus, and it said that Uranus hated these children, and he hid them in a secret place beneath the earth. And now we start to talk about the earth, and her name is a goddess. So again, it's used interchangeably. So, Earth is Gaia and Uranus was Heaven. And so they were the parents of the Twelve Titans, the Three Cyclops and the Three Hundred Handers. Now Gaia didn't like the fact that Uranus had hidden the children away deep inside her. And in fact what it's really saying is that Uranus stopped them from being born of Earth. Now Gaia decided she would do something about this situation and so she devised a plan. And so she went to her children and she asked them who would help her carry out this deed to repay their father for his wicked crime. And so it was Kronos that came forward and said he didn't care for his father for the shameful deeds that his father had committed against his children. And so Gaia took Kronos and she handed him a sickle that she had created 
and she told him of her plan and then she hid him away and when heaven came to rest he lay down and spread himself out and Kronos came from his hiding place and cut off his father's genitals with the sickle that Gaia had given him and it said his genitals were thrown into the sea and from them grew the goddess Aphrodite. Uranus called all his sons together and he named them Titans and he told them that you have all done a deed for which you will be punished. Now Kronos took Rhea for his wife and it said that she bore him the most brilliant of offspring. Hestia, Demeter, Hera, Hades and the last born Zeus. Now Kronos had heard a prophecy told to him by Gaia and Uranus and the prophecy said that he will be overthrown by one of his children. And so as each child was born he had the child presented to him and he swallowed the child down. Now the last child to be born was Zeus and Rhea went to Gaia and Uranus in distress and asked them for help as Kronos had swallowed all her children. And so a plan was devised that they would hide Zeus deep in a cave below the earth. And so Gaia who of course was earth received Zeus and hid him away from Kronos and Kronos was presented with a stone wrapped in baby's swaddling clothing and he received the stone and he swallowed it down. So time went by and Zeus had now grown into a man and Gaia spoke to Kronos and she convinced him that he should bring his offspring back which Kronos did and he regurgitated them one by one. And so this new generation was the generation of gods called the Olympians. And the previous generation of gods, the Titan Lords, they took their home on Mount Othris, while the new generation of gods took their home on Mount Olympus. So now we have two generations of gods and it said that they hated each other and that a war was begun. A war between the two generations of gods, the old generation, the Titan Lords, and the new generation, the Olympians. But after 10 years, there was no progress being made on either side. But then in the 10th year, Zeus released 
the hundred handers from their prison beneath the earth and the hundred handers joined the Olympians in war against the Titans. Now the Olympians with the Cyclops and the hundred handers started to turn the direction of the war in their favour. And it said that Zeus, who was leading the battle, attacked with all fury and vengeance, and he brought with him the lightning bolts that he'd been given by the Cyclops, and he attacked the Titan Lords with thunder and lightning until there was nothing but scorched earth. And so Zeus drove the Titans out of heaven and he imprisoned them in Tartarus, the world beneath the earth. And he assigned the hundred handers to be their guards. Now in summary, the first generation of gods was produced by Gaia and Uranus. So that's the earth and the heavens. And they were the Titan gods, a race of giant deities. And Uranus doesn't want these children, so he hides them away deep within Gaia. In other words, he doesn't allow them to be born. Now Uranus is overthrown by his younger son, Kronos. And now we come to the next generation of gods, the Olympians, and Kronos and Rhea bore the Olympian gods. Now Kronos is warned that he will be overthrown by one of his sons. And so he has every child presented to him once born and he swallows them down. Now Zeus, the younger son of Kronos, with the help of Gaia, tricks Kronos into bringing back his offspring. Now a great war is started between the two generations of gods. And this war lasts for ten years before Zeus releases the hundred handers from their prison beneath the ground. Then the tide of war changes in favour of the Olympian gods. And the Titans are driven from heaven and imprisoned in the world beneath the earth in a place called Tartarus. And there they're kept prisoner by the hundred handers. And so one of the points I find interesting in this story is the story is about two generations of gods. One older, one newer. One generation is a generation of giants and the other are the newer generation of gods and they are the gods of the heavens. Now this is something that we will see again in other creation stories. So that's a point worth remembering when we look at some of the other stories from the other cultures. So if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more then 
don't forget to like and subscribe and if there's any questions then just drop them down below so with that I'll leave you until next week when we look at the Norse creation story. <laughs>